What's up guys? Um, I'm going to do a little walk around, walk through um, my CNC. It is the design by Nico Dim. Uh, sorry if I butchered your name. Um, so I've been following that design and this is what I have put together. Um, so first off, before we get to some kind of a time lapse and videoing how it's cutting, let's make a model to carve into this wood. We now need to get our stock dimensions, which is 12 by 7 and a quarter by 3 quarters of an inch. Looks like 7 eighths, but if you get down here, it's 3 quarters of an inch. to real quickly go through some of the upgrades that I've done is uh, obviously the Z-axis carriage upgrade uh, that he put out that helped a lot. I put two linear bearings on each side so that helps with this slop right here. I also ordered some more bearings as you can see they overhang so there's two crammed in there. Um, it's still got some slap. I don't know if you can really see that but it's not near as bad as it was. So I did that to the same side over here. And another thing is I mainly, um, I also grease these up a little bit. And this is the next biggest thing right here, is the control box. So in the control box you can uh, see there's the CNC shield. Um, and then if we come over to this side, you can see the Raspberry Pi sitting in there and I have this design on my Thingiverse page so I'll put a link in the description below but basically I just wanted an all-in-one solution for my uh, print server because the Raspberry Pi is running uh, CNC JS and so I just have it jumping across here to the uh, CNC shield and this fan provides plenty of airflow to keep everything cool so it worked out pretty nicely I also labeled the uh, axes um, to which motor goes to what. Um, in the Thingiverse page, I have the all the step files uploaded, so you can use any CAD program to open this and modify it to what you want to do. So you can relabel these um, to different axes if you want to. It's not a completely perfect solution, but for now it does what I need. Um, in the future, I need to add some kind of way to screw the two top halves together, or the bottom and the half together. Right now it's just rubber banded, uh, but this is sufficient at the moment. One more thing I'd like to talk about is the bit. Uh, this is a four flute, eight inch, this is a two flute. And it's just a flat, flat end mill, and uh, this one I had problems with gumming up. Um, it takes smaller bites per revolution, uh, more bites obviously, but I had a lot more, a lot more uh, luck with the two flute as it takes it takes bigger bites and it uh, chips the wood um, a little bit bigger so it works a lot better for me one more thing is I added two linear bearings into this top part of the carriage I tried doing it in the bottom to the bottom one here but it wasn't wanting to cooperate very well to, with me um, so I ended up just having to do two on the top and one on the bottom, but even the two on the top really helped this. And in the beginning when I only had one on top, one on bottom, my entire carriage was like sideways. You could totally see it. Um, so it's uh, light years better with uh, the, the double bearing in it. So I really recommend putting double bearings in everything. First off, we're going to boot into our uh, server software. I got this all booted up and running on the network. We're going to zero our machine, find the center point, and zero it out with the Z-axis, and then we'll be able to start milling. So we're going to hop on over to the computer now.
You can see it just like that, it falls out with the tabs. You can still see the remnants of the tabs on here a little bit. So that's the rough cutout of it. I guess I should have done some pencil here so I could erase that, but nothing on the sandpaper can't take off. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the result. Uh, I wish it, I was planning to mill it this way, but it milled this way and it actually bottomed out on this side of about a half an inch. Um, but it didn't turn out too bad. I'm pretty impre pretty happy with the results. Um, I could have gone a little, well, not a little, but quite a lot slower in the milling speed. Um, and because it bottomed out, it left some lines here you, you might be able to see because um, it wasn't consistent on every pass. Um, this is one thing I'd like to improve. Uh, it's the screw drive. You can see the there's this tiny little bit of slap that can really build up. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how to get that out of there. Maybe um, a different coupler. Um, so that's something I gotta look at because it, it definitely affects my, Z, or my X axis movement. One thing I'd also like to do is move this motor back a little bit. I've seen some uh, designs like that. I just need to get some um, standoffs for my motor so I can have that extra inch or so of uh, x-axis carriage movement, which would have solved the issue today with this bottoming out. Um, but it was close. Alright guys, if you like this video, um, feel free to subscribe, like, dislike, whatever you felt like you got out of this video. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, I'll try to, try to put as much information uh, as I can in the description as far as links um, to the, my th the Thingiverse design, if you're interested in that. Um, but yeah, feel free to ask any questions. I definitely learned a lot. Um, I'm nowhere near perfect with this. As you can see, there's imperfections in it. Um, so it's just a kind of a journey of learning. Um, so I'll learn right along with you and I'll try to answer your questions. So, thanks for watching.